and welcome along and welcome back to Geiselsberg here on our PS4 start from scratch let's play. Um, we've got our two tractors here, we've got our Agrostar and our, um, our Massey Ferguson. So what I'm going to do is, uh, is we're going to start this up, uh, there we go, uh, and we're going to get these two working on our... Um, on our local, well, on our other two fields. So let's just try and get this reversing. There we go. Um, so we've got two fields left. Oh, no, we've got three fields left, sorry. Fields uh, 20. Uh, what are we? Fields 40, 39, and 38 are our fields that are still in a position that, uh, that needs doing. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this started on field. 40 uh, with the hide worker. Uh, we're going to get the other one started on field 39. And hopefully, between the two of them, this will all work fine. So, where is my hide worker? Should have it in here. Uh, oh, yeah. Let's take the, that down. There we go. And hide worker is. Oh. So, we'll start that going. And it will, hopefully, it will end up going. Uh, into the larger part of this field and, and not into the little bit of the end here. Uh, but we'll see how it does. We're going to head over to this tractor then and uh, and start this up as well. There we go. And, uh, and yeah, this tractor, we are going to get this going uh, over on, uh, as I said, field 39. Uh, we'll start that at the top side. Actually, we'll probably get started on field 38. That uh, will be the easier one for it. Uh, because uh, it will be... Uh, it's, it's slightly straighter, I think, field 38. Uh, and on console, of course, we're using hired workers rather than uh, anything like uh, cosplay or anything because those things aren't available to us on here. So it's a very much straighter setup for us. Uh, on here than it is on there. Like, I, I actually kind of feel a little bit like I should have uh, had my two sets the other way around. So had my um, Geiselberg here had that as uh, my multiplayer map and then um, done uh, my other map, or the other map that I'm doing as my uh, single player. I guess that's square of fields. But... Uh, I hope that is the way we are set up now. So let's get this going. Uh, again, we want to set the hired worker off here. And all well and good and going nicely. So that's those two fields working on. As you can see uh, from where we had last time, we are going to have to go around the headlands here on uh, field 29. So we've got some cleanup to do. But what I'm what I'm want to concentrate on today, and uh, and and what we need to do next is we got five hundred and twelve thousand pounds. Oh, sorry, five thousand twelve thousand euros. So I want to take. Uh, I want to head back this way, and we want to start building our farmyard really, uh, and experience the uh, building of uh, of the um, uh, of the yard and the construction stuff. One of the interesting things about Geisenberg, if you start on start from scratch, you do get this ladder sort of sitting in the middle of, uh, of nowhere. So I want to put a barn really up against the side of this. So let's head into the shop uh, and let's see what is on offer in here as far as sheds go. Now we do have uh, a few options in the sheds. Uh, we've got the standard ones, of course. We've got this brick warehouse. We've got some British sheds. Uh, we've got some... Uh, Curved sheds, which I think would be quite a good fit on here. It's quite a, yeah, it's with windows and bits like that. The VD industrial ones are quite good. I like the vertex design ones. They've got BGA shelter. We've got a big hall here for 59,000. Uh, wood chips hall, old barn. Now, they, these are quite nice. Um, that that old barn there and, uh, and that old hall there. Yeah, so they've got a few machine sheds and things. Uh, now, this one here, this crop storage, I quite like as a nice big barn. Now, I don't think we have enough space anywhere in our yard to actually place it, unfortunately. So, we need something a little bit smaller than this. 
I think, let's have a look at, um, at this shed here. Uh, so that won't fit down here. It won't fit up here. Wow. This is the th this is the issue with having uh, with not having the place anywhere. Now that is uh, that can't be placed there. Can we? Uh, no, we change placement height with that. How do I turn this? Is the interesting thing because that turns this. Ah, there we go. So that turns it. Can we place this anywhere either? No. This is this is the drop. Actually, I think this is caused by the fact that we have that. Um, we have that, that has gone the wrong way. As I feared, this went the wrong way. I know it no, it didn't actually. Okay, it's, it is doing the top end of this field because there's a, there's not much gap between the two fields. But it didn't actually go the wrong way. So, uh, we'll leave that going again. Jump out. So yeah, we're we're kind of hamstrung in what barns and things we can put down here because of this, uh, because of the placement stuff. Which uh, I'm slightly disappointed by, I will be honest. Uh, we don't have... Because I wonder if we can get close enough to any of that stuff to actually place anything. Uh, so we've got, uh, we got these machine sheds for 26,000, this one. But why can't we place anything on our, uh, on our yard? That's that's the bigger question I've got at the moment. All of this area here should be placeable, and uh, and it's colliding with an object. We can come. We don't own this. We can come out onto our own field here. Yeah, the moment we get anywhere near, anywhere near that, actually, we are we are stuck. Which is interesting. So we may have to build in a small area down here. Let's get something smaller and test this a bit more. So we've got this machine shed here. This, again, we are having trouble placing. It doesn't seem to want to fit anywhere on any of this. But should fit down here. On this bit. Yeah, the, again, the moment we touch that side area bit, it doesn't work. So, I'm going to try and place this. I think we're going to have to build a yard separate. Because, yeah, as soon as I get onto that area, I have trouble. We can't place anything at the moment. Which to me is, a, yeah, is a, I do have some disappointment in that. That we can't, in this yard at all, place anything. Which there are no collisions. Uh, just to be clear on that. As far as I can see, we have no collisions at all. And yet we, we're unable to place our shed. So, we can place this shed up to here. So I think we're going to have to to sort of create a yard area here as best we can. Uh, Nine thousand for that. That will store our stuff for now quite nicely. Let's uh, let's also do some uh, landscaping if we can. So we'll head back. We'll head over to here. Start landscaping, uh, and I want to switch over to the other bits. So. Uh, where do we do that? Where is our change landscaping mode? It is L3. Right, there we go. Uh, and then to go through our ground type is like that. And then paint. Yeah, then we can paint like this. And we'll paint our area here. And it looks like, yeah, so the reason we can't place over that other side 
is because it's not because this is is unworkable um but because it is uh we need to change shape change uh modification shape r3 there we go Is that it's it, it is just because we are in a position where it is um it is just not feasible it's not doable uh which is uh unfortunate really i'm uh i would quite like woo controlling this on on console actually is harder much much harder than pc it's uh much more sort of finicky to do. So I want to pull this. I'm going to take this right up to the edge here and give ourselves a nice big yard. Looks like we're going to have to sort of use this area as uh, a separate. I'm I'm a little bit miffed by this area up here. Again, I think it's because uh, all of this is modelled. So this is this is where uh, I think that that certain um, certain setups uh, when map making needs to be slightly more carefully thought of, and I'm not saying that that's uh, I'm not actually saying that that's a mapper's issue at the moment. I think this is going to be one of those things in FS19 that happens um, where we would probably be better off not starting from scratch on uh, on this. If uh, we uh, if we have these here, I wonder if we can raise stuff above these. But it's it is a little bit odd that we can't place on this, unfortunately. But we do have a beginnings of a shed here. We've got a we've got a shed area here that we can do. Uh, we can work with this a little bit more and uh, and go this way. And we at least have somewhere to store our equipment. So with five hundred and two thousand uh, left, uh, I think it's time for us to pick up a little bit more equipment. Let's head back out here. Uh, we do need to get a combine. Uh, we do need to get a cedar, and I think we might look at a slightly bigger tractor. So, looking at our medium tractors, the mods we have in here, the only ones we really have uh, are the uh, class DLC, so 120 for an Aryan with 145 horsepower, or the T6 blue fat power for 107. Um, I quite like both of those. In here, we've got a lot of smaller stuff. Uh, that we've been using uh, 97 443 horsepower on that Deutz. I think uh, I think what would be nice is to have a good mix in here we don't need more power at the moment is the only thing so we're going to have a look at the harvesters and the harvester I actually want to get on this map I think we're going to go for the uh, W330 uh, uh, it's 102 uh, and holds 14,000 so it's it holds more and uh, and yeah has a higher horse uh, has about the same horsepower as the case, um, so I think we should go with that. We're gonna grab that configuration, either Starfire or none. We're gonna go none because we have no GPS on here. Yes, okay, uh, and then we need to get a header for it as well. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna be using both sets of headers, so. Over here, at the end, we have got this header. That is 4.2 meters. How does that compare to that? 4.3, yeah. So we're going to grab that header as well. Okay. Uh, and we want to have a look at corn headers as well. Does this come with a corn header? Uh, it does not. So we're looking at one that is about the same width. Uh, 3.4 on the Zeigler. Uh, 6 is going to be too wide. So we'll grab the 3.4. Can't actually do any different colours on it. So we'll buy that. Okay. And then the last thing we need to do is we need to get a header trailer for our combine as well. So there we go. And is there a header trailer? No, there isn't. So we are going to go for the standard TM uh, and we're going to change the colour to the New Holland Green. I'm oh, sorry, New Holland Green, John Deere Green. So buy that as well. 
Yes, there we go. Right, and we will head over, and here it is. Our John Deere Combine for use on this map. So let's uh, start her up. And we can then drive her back. So switch from my controller back to my... Uh, now, I kind of wonder if you have a mouse on PS4. If you are able to... Um, uh, or if you're in a position where you're able to uh, move the camera around. Because at the moment, I'm using the joystick on my side panel. Uh, which seems to work pretty well. Let's just... Uh, gonna lower that down. Oh, no. It's a slightly different control, and I'm not sure exactly what it is. Right, close that up. No, that is a helper. That's why that's opening up. Okay. So switching between things it doesn't tell me. Uh, that's selected. So uh, to disconnect this, detach is X or 19 to 19 is that. So that's where I was going wrong with that. Yeah. Switching between the two controls, or, or two uh, controller configurations between uh, Xbox, uh, sorry, between PC and PS4 is confusing me a little bit. Um, I don't want to use the PS4 configuration on my PC uh, because of uh, the extra stuff I have. It would be quite useful though uh, to be able to reconfigure the controls on PS4 so that I could uh, do it in a slightly different way on here. Uh, but uh, it's not really an option. Oh, it isn't an option to be honest. Now hopefully this combine we are able to connect a head trailer up to down hand. So let's get over here like this. Get this onto this header trailer. There we go. Drop. There we go. And then we can pick up the other header and head back to our farm with the combine sorted. The other thing we're going to need is a uh, is a trailer for karting. Uh, we're also going to need a cedar. So we're probably going to buy those things today. Obviously, we don't have uh, any tractors that we can get those things back with at the moment. So as, uh, as soon as we have a tractor free, uh, having sorted our fields, uh, we can go and do that. Let's reverse this up. go so that's connected up and we should be able now to get this out of here there we go right and our combine is on the road now uh, that is very good news let's get this out of the shop and back to our farm so our farm is taking shape uh, we are uh two days this is our second day uh, into this and, uh, and yeah, uh, we are, wow, these roads actually out of that shop. I wouldn't like a big piece of equipment and <laughs> not doing that. Um, we are able to um, to sort of get going and, uh, and set up and things. Uh, as I said, we do need to get uh, probably a couple of seeders. I think we're going to have both our tractors doing the seeding. I do wish this farm was working a little bit better for us. I kind of wish Place Anywhere was a default thing. Uh, it's it just... It's a little bit too restrictive in this setup. When you have a farm that's set up like this. Uh, so, uh, yeah. I would, I would, I think quite like to see a bit more of that. Right, let's pop out so that we can get this sorted. And 
put this down the far end. Right. But yeah, it's, it, it means that most of the rest of this is, uh, is pretty unusable to us. Uh, simply because we, we just can't put anything on. I mean, we'll be able to, to put stuff on there and things like that. Uh, but yeah, as it stands at the moment, the rest of this yard is fairly unusable. And it's it's an unfortunate thing now, really. Right, let's, there we go. I think that's parked up. that and we'll leave this header on this combine for now we can always drop it off later if we need to i'm having a little bit of an issue with my uh the, the foot pedals on my g29 after after sort of three years it's beginning to get to the point where uh, what's happened it's not springing back quite as well. Right, so that is uh, that done. Our harvester is here. Let's head back to the shop uh, so that we can purchase some more bits we uh, we want and we can bring those back next time. So in here, uh, first we'll look at our tractors. So our tractors we've got are uh, 115 and 95 horsepower. If we go back and have a look at our cedars then, uh, what we have available cedar-wise at that, at that sort of level, uh, 140 and 180. So we're going to need... We're going to need something a little bit uh, more powerful. Uh to do that on the cedar side and on the planter side yeah there's a couple of uh, there's a couple of sort of standard ones which are quite good uh the amazon there that's 100 the eds we've got oh that one there that is 100 it does not require anything else i think no so we could get that that would be a nice little cedar for us um that would do everything we want to do on that side of things so uh and that is all of twenty thousand, which is good so we will purchase one of those um but i think uh cedars wise we're probably gonna have to go with something like the spirit r there or uh well which that if we try and use a hard worker with is going to be horrible um but i think our other ones are uh require too much horsepower at the moment so uh let's um let's grab ourselves a d830 uh this is a three meter cedar uh we can get a d9 um and i might bring the d9 in next time we're not going to be able to actually afford uh, or, or be able to, to collect this this time. So I think we'll leave that for now. We'll add the D9 Caesars in, which have a little bit more width, and uh, but sh don't have a huge amount more power. Trailer-wise, though, we have in here uh, these available, which is the EB770. Uh, they take 12,500 litres. Um and I quite like these. Uh, this is a this is a good little trailer, good little um, sort of random trailer. Uh, we can get it all in blue, but I am going to change the color. Oh, it's the same. We've got we've got the red here, so we can go with red wheels. Uh, I think red wheels and uh, main color. I think we want black chassis. Yep, I'm liking that a lot. Um, and then design color. Oh, no. Design color. I think we go with the red as well. That fits in with our farm quite nicely. So uh, capacity we are uh, currently at. Uh, so we can add a little bit and go 11. We can go. Then that, now that is for uh, let's bale wagon. Yeah, I think uh, capacity wise. I'm not sure we can use this trailer, to be honest. Because if I have a look in our garage, our combine holds 14,000 litres. We need a trailer 
that will hold more than 14,000 litres. 12,000 is the maximum for that. Uh, 21 is for that. 14,000 litres for the farm tech, uh, which either we can put the lizard wheels on, which is interesting. I think we might end up going with that rather than a modded trailer, simply because the EB is nice as it is. Maximum is 12,000, uh, whereas the cramp... Well, the crab actually uh, is not a bad choice, I think. We keep the main body red. Uh, we go with the black rims, maybe. Uh, and the design colour... Oh, no. Design colour, we can go with the black as well. Yeah, I quite like that, actually. I think that works for us. Uh, not a huge trailer. Um, 15,000 uh, litres capacity, so that fits in with what we want. 22,000 is a forage trailer. Uh, wheel brand, Trellborgs or Michelins. I think we'll go with the Michelins. Wide tyres or standards. Uh, we will go with the standards. Right, there we go. That is a good trailer for us as well. So that should work. And hopefully our tractors should be able to pull that. Now, how are our tractors doing? This one is fine. Our other one, this, has run out. So we are going to start this up again. And away we go. So start you up. There's something I want to show you with this quickly. Uh, before. We've got, a, we've got a little bit of time. The way I think these reversible clouds are used is slightly different to how this is uh, currently set up. Reverse up. I think reversible clouds tend to be you start at a midpoint in the field. Like so. You go down and away you go. And then you sort of expand out from here uh, would make sense to me as a, as a way to do this. I'm trying to keep this as straight as I can. Huh? Which is not easy. He's pulling to the side a little bit. I do like this uh, this 2000 series. Uh, it's a nice tractor. I've used it in a couple of places now. We're using this on the Xbox multiplayer as well. And, uh, and it just uh, just works really, really nicely. Uh, so what I think I'm going to do is, uh, is we're going to have a go with this. But I want to I show you how I, uh, how I think is the best way to use this cloud. Because it does pull to the side a little bit. I'm guessing that's due to the fact that we're doing it. Uh, uh, sort of a virgin cut or a virgin uh, row at the moment. And, then, and it seems that, yeah, the hive worker is stopping well before the end as well, which we don't want to do. So turn that, turn this around, and then we want to line ourselves up uh, again with the wheel. Sort of putting our front wheels into the furrow. Go like that, like that, away we go. And that should then mean that we just sort of expand out with this plough. Now, this plough is not very wide at all. Uh, it is the uh, biggest plough that this tractor can pull. And we have limited ourselves but to a certain extent with what we have in here. Uh, the fact that we are, uh, the fact that we're using low horsepower stuff, we're not using anything that has more than about a hundred horsepower, uh, means that we are we are very much limited. But the whole idea behind this is that we are going to build the farmer. So while yes, we could right now afford a hundred and fifty, um, uh, hundred and fifty horsepower tractor uh, I don't want to buy one because 
I don't want to spend that much money. We, uh, we started off with more money than we should have started off. So we should be struggling more than we are. We should have as many rewards as we have. So I don't want to, uh, I don't want to go too much into that at the moment. We may even, uh, as I was saying earlier, we may have to change where our yard is. We can't uh, build our yard sufficiently enough. Then it's it's not great for us. Um, but yeah, there we go. So that's uh, that's basically how I think we should be using this plow. Is expanding out our uh, our work. I'm gonna try and get this straighter on this run. Um, but we're about half an hour into this. I don't want this episode to go on too long. So uh, yeah, we're gonna get these fields plowed next time. I think we're gonna start getting some crops in the ground. Uh, we'll be using both our tractors to do that uh, uh, because. We'll be doing uh, one getting the, uh, probably canola and wheat and that kind of thing, and the other will be using to get in uh, things like uh, corn and things like that, and getting a nice, diverse set of crops. Uh, we're going to have to put in a grain store somehow, so uh, I've got to work out where we're going to actually uh, sort of expand our farm. If we can't use that area, um, any thoughts on that, uh, please give us a shout in the comments and, uh, and we'll have a look. Uh, it may be that we go, right, let's, uh, let's ditch this, start on New Farmer and uh, do a uh, sort of the start of construction on New Farmer. If we can uh, work out a way to get rid of that money and do this. Uh, for now though, uh, we're going to leave this here. Uh, and all that remains is for me to say thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please give it a like, drop us a comment, and give it a share. And for the latest videos and live streams from Virtual Farmer, please subscribe to the channel and ring that bell. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.